Today I have Paul with me. In the past, he has been living and working in London. He has more than 30 years working experience in product development and marketing. And then later he switched his interest in professional acting and singing. <laughs> he has an interesting personal experience. And later he progressed into public speaking and has since trained in coaching, public speaking and professional leadership. Through his podcast, Life, Passion, and Business, which he has started in early 2018, he wants to create this support for the people who have been through the midlife crisis. And now he's a midlife coach and runs virtual events and create resources to enhance life experiences and develop the human spirits. And in today's episode, I'm going to extract his brain. He has interviewed hundreds of people. And through his own personal experience, he has so much wisdom to share to help you find the passion in life and create a life purpose so that you can avoid midlife crisis later on. So welcome to Fast Track Podcast, Paul. Yeah, see, thank you so much for inviting me to the program. It's great to be here. I want to start with the first question because I know that you have uh, been running your podcast for since January 2018 and interviewed hundreds of people who, mm -hmm. you know, experienced midlife crisis. Um, can you explain to us usually what kind of um, crisis they've been through and why it happened? I guess I need to rewind a little bit, you know, because in 2017, I was running a, um, a, a marketing practice. I had marketing clients and my father died in the February. And he was an old man. He was 89 years old and he did not want to be 90. Um, and, you know, he was resistant to the idea. He, it's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And he, would, he would kind of like, you know, as old people do. Blah, blah, blah. So he was, he was funny with it, but at the same time, he was quite cynical with life and he was fed up and he wanted to go. Anyway, when he left, that was fine. It was like, okay, you know, dad's gone. But when I started to reflect on his life and the journey he had towards the end of it, I realized that he wasn't cynical and he would, had been fed up for years. It wasn't just a, a recent thing he'd been fed up with. He, had, he, he, was, he had been avoiding life. He had not been living it fully. Mm -hmm. And when I reflected on that I realized I had a lot of the similar kind of you know I'm a chip off the old block I had a lot of similar stuff that my father had and I thought there is something wrong with me what's going on and I suddenly reflected that I actually didn't really care whether I lived or died that was what I realized I realized I'm in a position myself where I didn't care I I was going through the motions of living and it's only in hindsight where I realized that's a midlife, that's a midlife real reality. It's a midlife crisis. And my father's death brought it into focus for me. So, but because I didn't know what I wanted or didn't know what to do, I, I, I sought, sought out ideas. I, I looked online as you do, you, know, you go and check Dr. Google and see what, you know, what, what's possible for you. And I found loads of kind of comments, loads of things, but I thought, this is not good enough. I need to talk to people and ask what people's experiences. So the podcast started out of my therapy. I was literally going to people who I thought knew what they were doing and saying, look, or you, how does this bloody thing like called life work? What is it about? How, does it, how do you make it work? And so that's how it started. So I started with just a few conversations and I realized it was a podcast. And then by 2018, it, it turned into a podcast. And as you say, since then, I've done over 200 interviews. I think that the, the reality is you will not avoid your midlife crisis. It will always happen. We will always go through some shift because that's the journey. We are on a journey of life. The question is, are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? That's, that's where the issue is. If you accept that life changes and that you, you have a series of stages and you, and you embrace those stages, then life works fine. If you are someone that has settled for something and you think this is how it's going to stay, it won't because life changes. You know, the partner you loved for years suddenly decides you're not, you're not for them anymore and leaves. The children leave, they leave home. The children have children of their own. Suddenly you're no longer a dad, you're a granddad. Whoa, that's a different feeling. You know? And all those things change our perspective of who we are and where, where we're heading. And it's just about addressing that in ourselves. Now, I can't give you the answer to this because the answer does not come outside of you the answer is inside of us and we each have to decide what that is for ourselves and what i do is i facilitate people and help them discover that answer 
you mentioned that back then uh, you did not care about live or die. What do you mean by that? I could see no purpose in my existence outside of the fact that I knew my family loved me and needed me to bring money in and, you know, and run the house. If I left, they would miss me, but there was no relevance to me being here. I could see no purpose in it. It's like, well, okay, this is just what I do. Were you working full time back then? Like you have been working for 10, 15, 20 years back then? I had the practice, you know, I, I, I did marketing clients. It was just, a, you know, like new marketing client, new projects. We're, we're selling more stuff. And that was the thing as well. It's like, I mean, what, you know, that's, I, I lost faith with marketing in 2010 because I could see that um, this constant drive for more, 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 more is destroying the planet. We, we, we cannot go on the way we are. And so I, I, in order to feel okay about that in myself in around 2010, 2012, I started working for clients, not necessarily for people that were doing fast consumer stuff. I started working for people making a difference. So I, for a while there, I worked for retreat centers and for I mean, in that personal development, um, planet development type marketing pro projects, things that were making a difference rather than making a problem. And that's, that's how I felt better about it. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't considering suicide, but it was at that point where I didn't care. That's the point. It's like I wasn't living life. I wasn't enjoying life. I wasn't seeing it as the gift that it can be. I was seeing it as, in terms of my father's context, as the, the bit you've got to get over before you leave. It, it's really hard to define this into words for you, I'm afraid, because it's a feeling. What would you do later on to change that? Because I can really relate to it. I think a lot of people, even before they, they hit their midlife, right? Uh, even young professionals, 20s, 30s, working 10, 15 years, every single day, day in, day out to the office, to their job. And if you take the job away from them or families away from them, what's the purpose in life? Like how would they define their life? Well, that is the point, isn't it? We each have to define the purpose for ourselves, and, 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 and it comes to us in different ways. And, and a lot of young people now are struggling with this one because they're looking at their unhappy parents and they're not understand, don't understand, well, if you're unhappy, how, what chance have I got? So it is about embracing something in ourselves and finding, finding that zest in something. There's no answer to this. There's no, there's no, if you do this, this, and that. Well, there are some things that you can do. Of course, there are things that you can do that will help you lead in that direction. Absolutely. If you just sit in a chair and like, mope over it, then you won't get anywhere. So the shift came for me from listening to people's stories because I have, you know, interviewing people, talking to people, and there's, there's commonalities in that. Um, the people that I found that had got through this process and the process can hit in many ways. So for me, it went in the way of like, um, I, I'm, I'm miserable. I, I don't know what this life's about. Other people, it can go, they can do extremely extreme behaviors. They can get into drugs, they get into drinking, they get into um, dangerous things. They, they, they get into inappropriate relationships or, or, or you know, they, they, they will live life on the edge in the other direction. In, in, you know, in some level, and I hope it will kill them. That's, that's, what we're, you know, it's, that's kind of what they're doing. They're kind of testing it. And, and the key is, in a way, what they discovered, those people that did that, is they actually did discover a way of living. They discovered a, 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 a healthy way of living. When they did it healthily, they, did, they, did, they found out well. So that, what it means is that the people that I found found a solution, they had a daily process. They looked after themselves. So they, they did exercise, they meditated, they ate well. And the other thing is they had good human interactions. They found enough people to talk to in life and have conversations. They found joy. That's the most important thing is to find joy, find space in your life for joy. And I think that's a really, joy is a very difficult one as you get older. Um, it's like, I, I saw on LinkedIn this week, a guy was saying he was on holiday and uh, he's having a week staycation and he had this idea to build himself a blanket fort. 
Now, this is the something we've all done as a children. You know, you push all the furniture together and you throw a blanket over the top and you, and, and you get under knife and you pretend it's something. And this is a man my age who built a blanket fort, fort and sat under it with his cup of tea. And he said, like, you know, he's like, and, and he's like, what do you think? You know, and it was a fun thing to do on LinkedIn. But it's like, what is the difference? It was like, I know, and I've had this conversation with other people about it. It's like, when I was younger, I could enjoy certain things. And as we age, they don't seem to have the same level of fun. And it's that exploration of where fun is. So, and I was saying to the guy on LinkedIn, you know, I used to make blanket forts 15 years ago with my son. And we would have a, an amazing time and it would be really enjoyable making that fort with him. And the interesting thing about it is, I know I was like in my forties doing this and I really enjoyed doing it. And I, and I could really access my child and my, and my own joy of playing this because I could do it with my son and his joy and excitement of doing it and doing it with me was really exciting. And so between the two of us, we both got joy out of this process of making a blanket fort. So that was just, you know, it, yeah, so now I can't do that on my own. If I tried to do it on my own, I still wouldn't get the joy out of it because it was the connection with my son that did that. So it, what it was clear to me now, it's the connections we have with people that give us access to joy and access to things. It's doing things that are unique with people. Right. It's so interesting. You mentioned earlier is um, to have a daily routine. Yes. Take care of oneself and to have connection with people that brings you joy. I think it's really worth um, for us to reflect uh, for the audience. Like today, did you have a routine? Did you take care of yourself? Did you have positive connections with people that brings you joy? And if not, try to think about a way to change your life. Recently, I started this daily workout from 9 to 9.20 with uh, Julian, mentor six pack. He was on my podcast before. So he started this community. And then I started meditation since last year. And I really feel different, really feel different. And now, as you mentioned, like connection with people, I started to think why I'm doing this podcast, right? Like there's no one forcing me to do it. No one is disciplining me to do it. But I feel very happy I enjoy the conversation with people that's joy I mean it's very interesting when you mention all this and I have I need to have a mental check why I do what I do this is joy for me having these conversations and talking about this stuff it's just it's just priceless having this opportunity and, and you know the technology that we have that lets us do this it's just so I'm just so blessed that I live when I do yeah when, when I started work bear in mind you know I'm, I'm 58 so when I started work there was a telephone and a, and a phone directory that was it that's all you had and telex machines mm -hmm. and fax was just an idea in the future so you know it's like you know there was no internet there was nothing but to have to be able to communicate like this with someone is, is such a such a joy the podcast itself was structured around three three questions at the time when it first started no four questions and the first question is, what are you passionate about? And then there was, what, how do you define success? And then what's your contribution? And then the final question was always, what's the meaning of life for you? So those are the four questions that I ask. And what I've become to realize over the last, you know, over the last year or so is the questions themselves are actually, they're a window into who we are and what we're about. So you can use the first three questions as, as a daily routine. And I've, and I've got people to do this before. I said like, okay, so when you get up in the morning, you know, the first thing you do is you know, get your, I mean, I do journaling. I write every morning, that's one of my processes. I come in here in this office and I write for at least 25 minutes or so. And I ask questions, I write a question on the pad and I see what answer comes back to me. And sometimes the answers can be really profound. And it's like, did that come from me? Where did that come from? You know, it's like, did, where, where did I write? Where did I get that information from? 
So, so it is, it's fascinating to do the journaling process, but getting back to the three questions. So if in the morning you have a piece of paper and you ask yourself three questions, what could I be passionate about today? What am I doing today that I could get really, really excited about? First question. Second question, success. Of all the things I'm doing today, how could I, what would, what would be success if I got any one of these things, what would be success? You see, too many people I meet, well, I was one of them as well. I would sit down with a to-do list of 30 items. I would tick off five items off the list. At the end of the day, I'd, I'd beat myself up for not me to do the other, the, other, the other 25. I was like, what a terrible day, I've done nothing. And the reality is I did five, five things. So I, I never set high bars for my day anymore. My day will be my day. We're moving towards the target over there somewhere. As long as we're moving in the target, in the general direction of the target, we're good. I'll set some priorities. Today, I'm going to do a, podca a podcast interview. I'm going to do several interviews. I'll do a bit of editing. Um, I'll do some social media stuff. And if I've done those things in the day, I'm happy. So I set up myself so that I can't fail. That's the point is I don't want to be a failing in the day. I want to set myself up for success. So I define what success is in the morning before I start. Now, I appreciate if you're in a very busy environment, if you've got lots going on, if you've got big projects going on. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's tough. But set yourself a small win for the day because you need that win. You need to say, I'm going to finish I'm going to finish one thing today. If I've got so many things I can't finish, then define what it is. So what I'm saying is go into the day with knowing what success looks like. And then contribution. So I have two forms of contribution. I have who, who am I helping others? How am I contributing to other people? But I also have is how am I contributing to myself? So every day I must do something for me. There must be something that I'm doing that contributes to my life myself. Now, I have a process. As long as I do my process, I'm always contributing to myself. As long as I exercise every day. So I do journaling, I do daily yoga, or I run. So those are, those are my pivotal things. And I do some meditation. Meditation, I'm a bit, I'm not good with meditation. I, don't, I, I like it when I sit and do it and, I'm, and I feel good about it. But getting my ass on the chair is sometimes a bit more difficult. I feel the same. <laughs> I mean, I cannot meditate without a meditation app. I'm like you. Uh, I yeah. want to ask you the qu first question, like you ask yourself every day. Where is your passion? Are you living it? I know many people, um, to them, it's a big question. Like, what is my passion in life? If people cannot find the answer, how would you advise them finding the passion in life? Okay, so there's several routes into finding your passion. And... and and I can tell you this from, from experience of the conversations I've had. So some people are born with it. Some people, literally, it's, it's what they do. It's what they are. They, they, they come into this world and they literally are that thing. And it, and it, and it, and it repeats itself throughout their life. They literally, they cannot help but, but explore their passion. And for others, it's not so easy. They have to discover it. <clears throat> and who you are, what you are, that's it. So... The first route you can do to look for your passion is look for what you really enjoyed as a child. Look for what was it that you did without asking, without question, you just did. One of the things that I did as a child is I spoke a lot. I was always talking. I was always known for my stories. I was always known for making stories up and talking a lot. And it's always been my best strength. I, you know, I, I can write, but the mysteries of grammar seem to elude me, even at 58 years old. And without things like Grammarly and, and, and a wife to look over the things I've written, um, people struggle <laughs> with my writing. But I can speak. I'm, I'm good at doing this. And sometimes I speak drivel, of course, we all do from time to time, but most of the time I can string a sentence together and, and be coherent with it. And I've always done that. So that's one of the passions that drove through for me. But if, if you've not got anything like that, if there's nothing in your life that kind of stands out for you, then it will be that you haven't found it. And that means you've got to explore. You've got to 
move towards things. So you, so the people that didn't have passion, the people that went out to find it, the way they did it is by exploring stuff. They did things. They tried new things. Um, and I appreciate it can be difficult for people who are introverted or people who have quite a high fear threshold, a low fear threshold. Trying new things can be difficult. I appreciate that. But it is, the, it is trying something new. It's experiencing new stuff. And then the, you've got to listen for that quiet voice. And it will be the quiet voice, that the inside quiet voice that says, this is interesting, this is good. Yeah, the inner voice, I often mention it in multiple conversations. I really like this book called Mastery. So in the book, it talks about each of us, we have our inner voice, but when we grow up in a society, in a family, in a religion, in a culture, that our inner voice are suppressed because of the external factors. And then for those who really discover their true inner voice, they find their callings and then they do the things that they're really truly passionate about. I really I, like that. I agree. I think that's very true. And that's very true of the people I've spoken to. A lot of them have, uh, discovered something quietly in the corner sort of thing. I mean, there's a, a one of my guests, uh, she had the big career um, and she met the man of her dreams and the pair of them had the big, powerful careers. They had the big house. They bought a massive house that, 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 and they had the cars and everything. And suddenly at I think he was 38 or something, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer and he was gone within two years. And everything that she knew collapsed around her. Everything went. Um, she now had big house. She had no income. She had nothing. And where it led her was because she was in such terrible pain with her grief. Because, I mean, she didn't have children and she had no plan to have children because that was the plan. They were going to live together in, the, in this big house. Um, and so in, in exploring her grief, she discovered grief counselling and the grief process. And her whole life now is about helping people with grief. And that's it. That, that's, and it's like that switch. And she is passionate about helping people deal with their grief. And part of that thing came out of her realisation that she struggled so much. She lost so much in those years when she struggled with grief that it's become her life calling now to help other people survive it. And I guess for me, in a way, the midlife conversation is the same. You know, I, I, I want to help people realize that life is an adventure. This is an adventure from the, well, I call it, uh, you know, the life quest. You know, we bo we're born, we die. And how we fill the gap is that is the choice, is the journey that we're on. And that's my passion now. It's, it's, it's helping people discover that journey. But I mean, if you'd have asked me that five years ago, I'd have said my passion was supporting businesses to um, uh, to, to build bigger, stronger businesses. It would have been yeah. the marketing world. I often find it's more fulfilling when personal contribution has a positive impact on another individual. I always find it's more fulfilling than a positive impact on a business. Yes. And that's the point. That's what we have to get to realize and learn. The fact that, you know, we're, we're but we came into this planet for us, for us, the, the being that we are. We didn't come into this planet for the company that we represent and for the money that we earn. But those things are good. I know, don't get me right. They are good. They, they are part of, part of the journey. But the journey is also rediscovering what we're about. You know, a, a few years ago, I took up archery because I wanted to explore what, what it would be like to fire, you know, to shoot a bow. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I haven't shot a bow since before the beginning of COVID. So, you know, it's like, I, you know, I, I need to get back out there at some stage and start shooting a bow again. Running. If you'd have said to me when I was 50, my, when, I, when I turned 52, um, my father and I, we, we, had, we didn't have the best of relationships. I didn't speak to him very much, but it's surprising how much influence he had on my life, considering he never, I never really spoke to him that much. Um, when I turned 52, I took a look at the state of my father's knees and I thought, if I don't do something about my body, I'm going to lose it. I need to get to the gym because I could see father was in a mess, you know, from, from age and not doing anything. So I went to the gym at 52 and I, I couldn't run. I discovered that uh, on, the on the treadmill, my, my knees hurt, my ankles hurt. 
And I had to learn to walk again. I ended up in physio. And what we realized is that um, when you place your foot down, said he on radio. I mean, for, for the benefit of listeners, when you place your foot down, most people place their foot flat, but they either pronate left or right. They either tip it in or tip it out slightly. And I was tipping my feet in too far. So what it was doing was putting pressure on my knees. That's why I couldn't run. I had to learn to place my foot properly. And so I learned that. And then I started running on the treadmill and I started running outside. And in 2018, I did my first 10K and now I'm training to run a marathon. If you'd have said to me when I was 52, I will be running a marathon in some few years. Okay. Well, you know, I, I am the fittest I have been in my life. Wow. Well, yeah. It's really, it's all about taking care of yourself, right? And also have this healthy daily routine. And then, well, there is that, there is that, but it's also, you know, it's about finding the opposition, pushing against something. It's about finding something to push against. I think when everything becomes easy, we, we fall into comfort. And when we fall into that level of comfort and easiness, then things start to get boring. There's a saying, frog dies in boiling water. So, which means people survive in uncomfortable situation and grow. And in comfortable situation, you started to deteriorate over time. There's a lovely old joke of two old guys sitting on a, on a porch in the US somewhere and you know, they're sitting there having a beer and, it's, and the sun is setting and there's, do- there's a dog sitting be- between them and the dog is whining. Mm-hmm. The dog is whining. The whine's getting louder and louder. And the guy says, says, why is your dog whining? And he said, oh, he's lying on a nail. He says, why doesn't he move? He said, oh, it's not got that painful yet. You know, and it's like, that's the thing, isn't it? We, we stay in places of discomfort, mm. but we become, we become accustomed to that discomfort. Yeah. Working hard and stress is one of those things. People kind of get used to living with stress and they, and they work to, they, they stick with it. And my podcast is littered with people who have done this and then their body's gone, no that's what happens eventually the body goes no and I, and something you know disastrous happens either you end up with a breakdown or you end up with something or you end up with sort of the, with an illness you cannot push your body in places where it doesn't want to go mm. too long you, you have to look after it we only get one <laughs> yeah in the startup world there's also a new book published i forgot the author Literally, the book is about do not overwork. Like people take pride in overworking. It's like, oh, I work so much. I work 100 hours per week. It's a culture thing. It's nowadays. the Gary Vaynerchuk model. It's the grind, isn't it? It's Gary, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk will talk about grinding out, grinding, getting it done, getting oh. it done, you know. And, it, and it's, you know, and I, you know, I all admiration for Gary Vaynerchuk and what he's achieved, but I don't think he's helping the, helping the entrepreneur world with the grind. I mean, maybe when you're young, maybe, maybe you do, but you've got to set a limit. Yeah. You've got to say, okay, I'm going to grind this out for 18 months. And you must set a hard limit on that. Yeah. You, you cannot go on and on and on and on. I, there are so many people that have done this. And they, as they say, that they're writing checks that their body can't cash. Yeah. Okay. That's a very good sentence. I have one last question for you. What is the question you wish people would ask? That's one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just didn't know. I, well, I, in the podcast, that's one of the questions I put in there. I, uh, but the question I want people to ask themselves is, is, is this the life I want? And what, what, what am I going to do about What am I going to do about it? Because if the answer is no, then what am I going to do about it? And you're right. If, if, if you may not be able to do any, a huge thing about it, but you can do one thing. You can do... You can write and you write in a journal. You can do one thing. Even if you take one thing out of this conversation today, start a journal. Ask questions of yourself because you will be amazed what, what wisdom you have inside of you. And that's the key to it. We've got to tap into our own wisdom. And that can happen through exercise. For me, when I'm running, you know, I, it's just me and my, and my running and the, and the kilometers I'm running. And when I do that, if I run for an hour, my head is so clear at the end of that hour. I yeah. am like, I'm like. It's also like a meditation, right? It is a meditation. Yeah, you have to make space for yourself. So if, you, if you've if you got, you know, a, a life that's tight and there is no space, 
find 10 minutes, even if it's just, okay, I'm going into a meeting, I've gone for one meeting the next, simple one for that one. Take two breaths. <sighs> take a breath. That's, there's so many things you can do. Take a breath, take two breaths. I, I, I think I can represent like this generation or the people who are very driven, you know, to achieve more in Korea. I, I think the pitfall people usually fall into is that they are so busy focusing on developing their career and working hard and get that promotion. But at the end of the day, why you are living your day, why you are living, what was the meaning about life? It's not about the next promotion. It's your every single day, how you live your life. And that's, that's kind of a question I started to think more frequently nowadays since I stopped working for a company. Like, why I'm leaving? Like, why I'm living my life every day? For what? How would I enjoy my life? I don't think it's two things. I think one thing, life had the, the meaning of life for me now is to express joy for myself, express joy and find joy. So the things that I enjoy, I enjoy running. I express joy, cooking. I love cooking. I love cooking for people. Not so easy during COVID, but hey, I cook for my family, you know, and I, and I have, and I've managed to, um, one thing, one great pride for me is that I've managed to transfer that, that joy of cooking to my son. So my son is 19, he's left home and we swap photographs of food with each other. <laughs> we try and top each other out with different meals of cooking, which I think is funny. Nice, nice. You know, so it's, it's about those things, it's about expressing your joy, but it's also about expressing joy with others being with others, helping others, supporting others, mm -hmm. make the world a better place. If we could all make the world a better place every day, if we, if the world goes to, you know, if we all go to bed having thought I've done a, a good job today, that, that to me is part of the meaning of life. When exactly. you go to bed and say, I've screwed people over today and I've, you know, and I've, and I've, and I've damaged the planet, yet that can't be helpful, can it? <laughs> what would be the last message you want to leave to our audience? Live the life you were meant to lead. In, you know, live that life. Find out what it is. And it's your choice. You can live a life. You, you don't actually have to do anything. You can choose to do nothing with this life. Or you can choose to make it great. And it's your choice. Nice. Thank you so much for being here, Paul. Yes, it's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.